Set. It is a frigid Saturday afternoon here at the CCBC Catonsville Cardinals Baseball Complex as we are getting set up for a doubleheader match between the Spartans of Cayuga Community College for Upstate New York and your CCBC Catonsville Cardinals. Hello folks, this is Isaac Donsky here, ready to bring you all the action for today's doubleheader. It's going to be a good one today. Cardinals in the midst of a four-game winning streak. They're turning it around after their uh, early season struggles in Florida. Meanwhile, Cayuga, they have had a, uh, well, nothing really. This is the start of their season. This will be their first game of the year. New test for them, new test for the Cardinals. We're about to get the game underway, so let's quickly take a look at the starting lineups. And we start with the visitors from Cayuga. And good news, folks, we have fixed our technical issues that we had during the first couple series of the season. That's good to know. Well, seeing as actually they're about to take the field, let's hold off on starting lineups. We'll give you the starting lineups throughout the course of the game, but instead, let's take a look at how the Cardinals will be playing this one defensively. It is a bitterly cold day out here. Very fierce winds. If our broadcast happens to die in the middle of it, we, will, we do apologize. That is a possibility considering how fierce the winds are. We're getting underway a bit earlier here than expected. As always, it is a pleasure to bring these games to you folks. It looks like we do have enough time to squeeze in the starting lineups. So let's meet the starters from Cayuga. Batting first and serving as the designated hitter. If I can find him here on my, there we go. Batting first and serving as the designated hitter will be a sophomore from Dunkirk, New York, number 17, Phil Messina. Batting second and playing second base. will be a sophomore from Brooklyn, New York, number 27, Fernando Espinal. Batting third and playing first base will be a sophomore from Elmira, New York, number 15, Tyler Korski. Batting fourth and playing out in right field will be a sophomore from Dunkirk, New York, number 22, Michael Norton. Batting fifth and catching today for the Spartans will be a freshman from Baldwinsville, New York, number 19, Perry Chetney. Batting sixth and playing third base for the Cardinals will be a sophomore from Edmiston, New York, number nine, Luke O. Batting seventh and playing center field will be a freshman from Brooklyn, New York, number 20, Bradley Soto. Batting eighth and playing the shortstop position for the Spartans will be a sophomore from Jupiter, Florida, number three, Roy Glom. And batting ninth and playing right field will be a sophomore from Rochester, New York, number one, Caleb Deli. Meanwhile, for the Cardinals, here is their starting lineup. Batting first for the Cardinals and playing center field will be a sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, number 27, Angelo Ramirez. Batting second and playing left field will be a freshman from Catonsville, Maryland, number 17, Jalen Williams. Batting third and serving as the shortstop for the Cardinals today will be a sophomore from Bowie, Maryland, number 11, Moises Aristi Jr. Batting fourth and playing first base will be a sophomore from Columbia, Maryland, number 23, Big Tony D'Angeli. Batting fifth and serving as the designated hitter for the Cardinals will be a sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, number 18, Miles Bowens. And we'll finish the rest of the lineup in a second because it's game time. So this will be the first batter up for the Spartans. Phil Messina, sophomore from Dunkirk, New York. And facing him will be the freshman catcher, Cecil Barone, who had that fantastic game last weekend against Lakeland. Here we go. Game one of the doubleheader is underway, and there's ball one. 
Barone had that complete game he played against Lakeland last Sunday. An excellent game for him. Second pitch smacked up into left field. Jalen Williams is going to hop on that and it'll be a single to kick things off for Messina. Batting up next for the Spartans, Fernando Espinal, the second baseman from Brooklyn, New York, a sophomore. As he faces Barone. First one is inside just a little bit. That'll be ball one. Cayuga wearing black jerseys, gray pants, red numbers, white trim. Catonsville in their traditional home whites with white pants, white numbers, and black trim. 1-0 count, make it a 2-0 count. Another inside pitch, ball two. It's brutally cold out today. The wind really whipping up. High pitch, ball three. We're on a little shaky at the start. A 3-0 count for Barone. Espinal. That time he gets it down the middle for strike one. Big gust of wind coming through here. Again, folks, if by any chance the broadcast cuts out, we will restart it as soon as we can. We had those troubles last weekend. We shouldn't have them this weekend. We seem to have fixed most of our technical issues as that gets fouled off and brings Espinal to a full count. Heavy, heavy winds. My goodness, the wind is going to take that one foul. If the wind wasn't blowing so hard, there's a good chance that could have been fair. Instead, it's going to be another foul there for Espinal. Still at a full count. Barone facing him down. This is the kind of day where you wear, wear layers out there on the field. We're wearing, wearing layers up here in the press box. Espinal, little chopper, grounder right to the first baseman, D'Angeli, and he's going to easily get him out there. But that does advance Messina to second as the wind continues to pick up, and this will bring up Tyler Korski, the sophomore first baseman. First pitch is just a tad bit high, so that will be ball one. Barone keeping his eyes on Messina over at second. Pitch fouled off and slams right back in front of our press box. Thank goodness for the protective netting. One and one count. Strike two. Barone st starting to tighten up just a bit out there on the mound. Not wearing any protective gloves or anything, so he's getting the full brunt of this icy wind that's cutting across the CCBC Cadence Cardinals baseball complex. Chopper, third base. Oh, it slipped through Noah DeLuca's hands. That's going to advance Messina at the third. He's going to try and make it home. Messina will score first, and Cayuga takes the early lead. An error there by Noah DeLuca. Allows Messina to score. Korski advances to third. This will bring up Michael Norton out of Dunkirk, New York, the fourth batter. Outside pitch, Wind may have gotten a piece of that one, ball one. Just brutal winds out here today. There is strike one. It's 
Strike two. This is the situation Barone was in last at bat, which the Cardinals gave up that early run. One and two count. Outside and down to the left, ball two, evens us up two and two. Fouled away, that's gonna land somewhere back, most likely on our soccer field. As now we got a mound visit, as that's the catcher, Alex Valdez, coming up to talk things over with Barone. As the wind continues to play havoc here with his pitches, another huge gust of wind coming through. If it wasn't for the wind and freezing temperatures, it would be a beautiful day out here. Nearly a cloudless sky. Little chopper hit up towards Chico, second baseman. He's gonna flip it to D'Angeli. And that's out number two. Korski now advancing to third. Next batter up will be Perry Chetney out of Baldwinsville, New York. And Chetney smacks that one deep into left field. Williams is back. He got it. A great save by Jalen Williams, and that's gonna bring it into the first inning. One is left on. The scores we head to the bottom of the first. It is one nothing in favor of the Spartans. And we'll be right back. Pitching today for the Spartans will be freshman Joey King, number 30, from Decatur, Illinois, one of a few players not from upstate New York playing for the Spartans. It's a bit odd to see the Spartans out there in the uniforms they're wearing as they're essentially inverses of what the Cardinals are wearing. The Cardinals actually have worn black jerseys with red numbers before. This year they have black jerseys with just regular white numbers. Very nice custom jerseys, I might add. We got a little bit into the Cardinals lineup at first, but we had to stop because the game got underway. Again, we had a little bit of a late start. There was some confusion over the starting time, but that has been fixed. So batting first for the Cardinals will be the minister of the stolen base. The big man from Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia to be exact. Number 27, it's Jello time folks. Angelo Ramirez will lead off for the Cardinals. Jello already having an excellent season. Last game for the Cardinals against Dundalk, that thrilling 9 to 6 rivalry game. Jello very first at bat triple. Set the tone early and would prove that throughout the game. As King gets a couple, excuse me, Young gets a couple more pitches into his catcher. That's Chetney, who was the last up for the Spartans. Another big blasts of wind coming in here. I can barely hear myself. That's how, that is how fast these gusts of wind are coming in. It's expected to be like this all day, folks. Cold, windy. Weather is beautiful, though, as it's Jello time. He's up first. Several times this season, Jello has 
scored on the ver scored or gotten on base on the very first pitch of the game. That's just the kind of player he is. Very aggressive. Just wait till he gets on base. There's a reason I call him the minister of the stolen base. Last year he shattered the school record as immediately he goes for a bunt. Very well placed bunt. Jello racing to first. Not able to get there in time. He is tagged out. But you can see that aggressiveness as Jello immediately going for a bunt there on the very first play. Batting second for the Cardinals will be the talented outfielder number 17, the freshman Jalen Williams. Hometown kid out of Catonsville, Maryland. Williams has had a solid start to his season as well. First pitch. Dropped by the catcher. That'll be ball one. And one has to wonder if the wind carried that at all. Williams pops that one up into left field, excuse me, right field, and he'll be caught out by the right fielder, Norton. And that's two quick outs here for the Cardinals. Batting third for the Cardinals will be Moises Aristi Jr., the sophomore out of Bowie, Maryland, graduate of Arundel High School. Last couple of, Moises is, uh, been in a tad bit of a slump the last couple of games, looking to break out of it. And he immediately fouls that one away, and it will land somewhere. Well, it looks like it's going to take a couple hops, land in a neighbor's yard. Oh, nope, rolling back down to the street. That'll be strike one. There is a neighborhood right behind us where foul balls usually go. That's good. Will it go fair? No, it will go foul. As that was slapped just past the right field line. And that's going to be strike two. So Aristi already in a hole here. So is the, are the Cardinals. So they trail 1-0 in the bottom of the first. Again, this is a seven-inning game, being game one of our doubleheader. Game two coming up around 3.30. Young winding up. Here comes the pitch. Just a tad bit outside. Ball one. Aristi gets another piece of that one, and it will go flying back into the neighborhood. No harm done. Remains a one and two count. Aristi gets a piece of that one. Chopper, good placement. Track race to first base. He got there. Did he? Yes, he did. As there was some confusion there by the second baseman. So Aristi gets to first, as this will bring up number 25, big Tony D'Angeli out of Columbia, Maryland, the first baseman. And this is a player you gotta watch out for. D'Angeli has a habit of every so often, as there's a pickoff attempt, Aristi's gonna run to second. Ball is rolled under the bullpen. He's gonna make it to second. Will he go to third? No, he's gonna stay there. They tried the pickoff attempt. It flew through the first baseman's glove, and Moises Aristi Jr. is going to go to third. Looks like he was going to go to second for a se Excuse me, a third. He looks like he was going to go to third for a second, but he will stay at second as the umpire giving some clarification there. I think the wind may have gotten a piece of that ball. And now the Cardinals have a run and scoring position. And Tony D'Angeli, as I mentioned before, as I was mentioning, he's the kind of player who will be very quiet, but every so often, oh, Pitcher bulked there for a second. D'Angeli, very quiet player, but every so often he will go off. Right down the middle, there's strike one. D'Angeli and Aristi try to tie this thing up for the Cardinals. Don't want to fall behind early. Another big gust of wind. This could be beneficial. D'Angeli gets a piece of it, sends it foul for strike two. Pitch is thrown. Gotcha may have dropped that one. That's going to be ball one. One and two count. Whew. 
One and two. Big shot by D'Angeli, but that's going to go way foul. And you can see the wind carrying it a little bit as it lands on the opposing batting cages. So this game is go definitely taking the complexion of a game that's going to be decided by the weather. With how much wind we've been, which wind we're experiencing. We're already getting all warmed up with blankets up here in the press box. Hot cocoa would be nice too. <laughs> it's that kind of day. Ball two, evens it up at two and two. D'Angeli, very patient batter. Cardinals have a couple of these patient types who will just wait for the perfect moment to strike. And when they do, it'll be big. There is a tiny chopper right back to the pitcher. That's going to be a quick out. Flips it to the first baseman. And a good defensive stand there by Cayuga. As we're going to head to the top of the second. The score one nothing in favor of the Spartans. So the wind actually isn't that bad. It's just that my uh, headphones are enhancing it, making it sound like it's way worse. But it's still pretty bad out here, folks. One nothing lead for Cayuga as batting for the batting for the Spartans will be number nine, Luke O from Ed, Edmiston, New York. Most of these players hailing from upstate New York. That's where Cayuga is located. There's a couple players they do have from some other states and one international player who I don't think we'll see in game one as he faces Cecil Barone. And O oh, takes a big swing and will miss. That'll be strike one. Outside, ball one. Evens the count up at one and one. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Row looking a much, much, much tighter here in the second inning. Swing and a miss. They got him out. A quick out there by Cecil Barone. And this will bring up the next batter coming to the plate. Will be Bradley Soto, freshman from Brooklyn, New York, the center fielder. Soto smacks that one. Nice pick off by Aristi. It's going to be a track race. Oh, he doesn't get there. It lands over D'Angeli's head. Thankfully, Valdez was in the back to stop that from becoming a double. And again, I think the wind may have had... The wind may have been a reason for that going so far out of D'Angeli's reach as Soto advances to first. But good heads up play there by Alex Valdez to move behind D'Angeli in case something like that would happen. Next up, it's Roy Glom, the sophomore from Jupiter, Florida, one of several players outside of New York for Cayuga. And he gets a piece of that one, knocks it foul. See where it lands. It landed somewhere over there. We'll find it later. And that'll be strike one. Yeah. 
missed that pitch for a second. That pitch got away from Valdez, almost hit, almost hit Glom. Wind chopper nearly hits the base runner. It goes rolling into right field where Caleb Bailey is there. And that'll put two on for Cayuga. One has to think they're getting a big assist from the wind, but that ball almost slammed into Soto as he was making his way to second. And it might have, did it hit him? I think, as we have a scoreboard issue, I think that that actually hit Soto and that recorded an out, yes. Soto was hit by the ball, recorded an out. I've never seen that before, but I mean, I guess that's how it works. So Soto got hit by that ball, that's an out, two outs now, and now batting. Will be, if I can find him, Caleb Deli from Rochester, New York. The left fielder, excuse me, it took me a second to find that. One and two count for Deli. Got a piece of that one, landed almost near our camera. No harm, no foul done. Just a tad inside, ball two. Barone's pitch, knocked fair. Did they get him? Yes, they did. Delhi's caught it first and that'll bring to an end to the inning. Good defensive stand by the Cardinals there, despite you letting a couple players on. And that bizarre out that occurred to Soto. So we'll head to the bottom of the second now. It's still 1-0. Cardinals looking to even this game up. Leading off the bottom of the second four, the Cardinals will be the designated, hit, designated hitter, number 18, Miles Bowens from Stone Mountain, Georgia. The sophomore, tallest player on the Cardinals. Well, actually, our tallest hitter on the Cardinals. We have two pitchers, both near seven feet tall. And his first pitch will be a chopper knocked up right to the shortstop. Bowens is gonna make it as once again, the ball gets past the first baseman and goes dashing off towards the bullpen. Second time that's happened today, and Bowens is gonna get his way to first. Good start for the Cardinals here, and now coming up next for the Cardinals. Let's grab my roster here. Papers are flying everywhere, gotta be careful. Will be the freshman catcher from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, number eight, Alex Valdez.
Valdez, chopper right up towards the shortstop and good hit too. That's gonna get him to first. Cardinals already have two on and next up for Catonsville. The sophomore outfielder from Severn, Maryland, number 10, Caleb Bailey. If you remember one of our first broadcasts against Lakeland, he hit that massive walk-off home run. He's actually leading the Cardinals in batting average this season. As now, the catcher having a discussion with the pitcher here, giving him a signal. As already, Cayuga has allowed two on in the bottom of this second inning. Bowens at second, Valdez at third. Bailey fainted a butt. Oh, that's going to be close. They tried to get Valdez out at first. Excuse me, they tried to get Bowens out at second. Wouldn't go. I think that was ball one. Yep. Now they go for strike one there. One and one count for. Bailey. One and two count. Bailey facing some stiff opposition here from Young on the mound. Young's pitch. Outside, that looked almost intentional. As the catcher shifted so far to the left, he may have been adjusting for the wind, however. As, well, there's a bizarre circus situation. Young's glove just got blown off his hand by the wind. I've never seen that happen before. This is a game of first, isn't it? Wind got a piece of that one, hits the dirt. Ball three, full count for Bailey. Two on, one runner in scoring position. Full count for Caleb Bailey. The pitch. Strike three, got him looking, and that'll be the first out. Still two players on. On base for the Cardinals, as coming up next will be the sophomore third baseman from Odenton, Maryland, number three, Noah DeLuca. Very patient player. He has a tendency to just sit and wait for the perfect ball. I think he gets walked more than any other Catonsville player because of his tendency to just wait. Not that time, though. Swing and a miss for strike one. And we'll chalk that up as commentator's curse. Another swing, another miss. I, I promise you folks watching at home, he is, <laughs> he is patient. This is just uh getting some good looks. Young's pitch. Just a tad outside of the uh, outside of the box and that'll be ball 1, 1 and 2 count. Pitch. Chopped at it, foul ball. And it bounces off of the fence. Okay, good coach coming out to retrieve it. Another big gust of wind coming through. Two on, pitch, high. Catcher trying to get Valdez out at first. That'll even the count up at two and two. Two count. Swing and a miss, and that's going to be strike three and out number two. So the Cardinals still have two on, but they're struggling to hit here against Young. Batting next for the Cardinals will be the sophomore from North Arlington, New Jersey, number five, the second baseman, Christian Chico Figueroa. Very unpredictable player. You never know what you're going to get when Chico's up to bat. He had a fantastic triple in our home opener against Lakeland. Keep your eyes on him, folks. Takes a big swing at that one and another miss. One has to wonder if the wind keeps carrying these these uh, pitches. 
making each of the batters think that what they're experiencing, they're getting a good look when in reality it's going to be a strike. Big hit there by Chico, bumps it up into right center field. And that'll be caught out by the center fielder. And that will bring an end to the bottom of the second. So the Cardinals go scoreless. We're headed to the top of the third. It's one nothing Cayuga. Leading off this inning for Cayuga will be number 17, Phil Messina. Let's see what he can do here with his first at bat, his second at bat, excuse me. And he gets a low pitch for ball one to kick things off. Messina again hailing from Dunkirk, New York, one of two players on the team from Dunkirk. Low pitch ball two. Barone had a good second inning, was able to get a couple of quick outs along with that bizarre out for Soto. Big gust of wind here, Chopper, right to the glove of Noah DeLuca. Great catch, DeLuca fires it, had to do a low throw to Tony D'Angeli to account for the wind, but it works. Out number one. Good defensive stand there by the Cardinals. Up next, number 27, Fernando Espinal from Brooklyn, New York. Cardinals defense stepping up here after that first inning where they struggled as they face Espinal. First pitch, strike one. Good look there by Barone. Remember, he had that fantastic full game he pitched against Lakeland. That was the game that we showed in seven parts here, seven different live streams on the Cardinals network due to all the interference. As Espinal smacks that one into right center field, Bailey can't get there in time. Espinal's going to round the bases, heading towards second. He's going to make it. It's a double for Fernando Espinal. As he signals back to the dugout. And this will bring up number 15, Tyler Korski, the sophomore from Elmira, New York, graduate of Thomas Edison High School. It feels like every school district has an Edison High School. I know mine did. A couple of friends of mine, they had an Edison High School, different Edison High School. Looks like there's an Edison High School in New York as well. Pretty much every state has one. Here's Korski. One man in scoring position. First pitch, just a tad outside of the zone. That'll be ball one. Verona's definitely tightened up. He's throwing more strikes than balls from the first inning. Fouled away, strike one. One and one count for Tyler Korski. Whew. 
The sun is out, nice and warm, feels amazing. It's honestly a beautiful Saturday day. As Korski grounds that one out to DeLuca, who's gonna fire it to D'Angeli. Out number two. The DeLuca, uh, the DeLuca D'Angeli connection is working here for the Cardinals, as they've got two outs. Batting next for Cayuga, number 22, Michael Norton, sophomore from Dunkirk, New York. Barone keeping his eyes on Espinal at second as he throws a perfect strike. 0 and 1 count. Almost an hour into this first game. It's gone by relatively quickly as there is a ball that Barone mentioned motions to himself. Yep, that was my fault. Uh, don't be so quick to judge there, Barone. I Cecil, I think the uh, the wind may have gotten just a piece of that. One and one count for Norton as Barone bulks there. One and one. Fouled away. Goes flying over, probably lands on our soccer field. That'll be strike two. Speaking of the soccer fields, for anyone listening at home, if you're if you're a student here at CCBC Catonsville interested in intramural sports, or well, we're starting them up next week on the soccer field. Intramural soccer will start from two to three next Tuesday. I look forward to seeing any students there who are interested. Find out more information. Contact our athletic department. That one down at the dirt, that's gonna be ball number two. Two and two count. Two and two count for Norton. As Barone keeps his eyes on Espinal. Norton chops that one. Fair. And D'Angeli is just going to, no, they're gonna say it was foul, excuse me. I was wondering why Tony was, ah, okay. So they're saying that it was a foul as it hit, the ball hit off Norton's leg, so that was foul. It remains a two and two count. I was wondering why D'Angeli was so uh, slow to get to the ball. Swing and a miss, and Barone gets another strikeout as we head now to the bottom of the third. The Cardinals defensively are stepping up against this Cayuga school. They have shut them down at two straight innings. We'll be right back as the Cardinals will head up to bat and try and even this contest up.
It's the bottom of the third, and we're at the top of the order for the Cardinals. It's Jello time as Angelo Ramirez is up to bat. Was caught out in his first at bat after that bunt attempt. Still, hyper aggressive player. Always love it when he's up to bat. You never know what's going to happen. As Jello got a piece of it with his handle as it bounces foul into the arms of Jalen Williams, who's waiting back there on deck for the Cardinals. And that'll be strike one. Pop-up foul, third baseman running over, no luck. And Jello's got himself in a bit of a hole, 0-2 oh count. Pitch, nice hit right up the middle and Jello's gonna safely make it to first. He takes a wide arc away from the base path. That'll get him to first base. Good hit there by Jello. That's up next for the Cardinals. Jalen Williams. Williams had some incredible defensive saves in our first home game of the series against Lakeland. One of the bright young freshman stars, he's earned his role in the starting rotation. Jello's gonna try and take off for second. Will he get there? Oh no, they got him, and he can't believe it. And he's still standing out there at second like he can't believe what happened. Jello is one of the most prolific base runners in the country. He led the entire nation in, base, in stolen bases last year. As head coach Dan Blue not pleased with the umpire's call there. Because that'll be the first out. One and one count. Jello usually averages as Jalen hits that one. Pitcher dropped it for a second. Track race won't get there in time. Out number two. This game is going to be a pitcher's duel, it looks like, as now. Well, the umpire coming up to discuss something with the pitcher. Moises Aristi Jr. up next for the Cardinals. See all kinds of bizarre things when you work these games, and I think that was one of them. The umpire telling the pitcher something didn't catch that. The ball. Ah, so it looks like the ball hit the uh, ball hit the pitcher. They were checking to see if he was okay. There's ball one, been inside. Big shout out to our live stat guy and my spotter for today's game, Tommy, working beside me. He's uh, <laughs> giving me the deets on what happens when I can't hear it. As Aristi smacks that one up into left center field, and it will be caught. And that's going to be a quick inning for the Cardinals. They still trail 1-0 as we head to the fourth, nearing the halfway point of game one. It's a pitcher's duel here at the CCBC Catonsville Cardinals baseball complex. We'll be right back.
Top of the fourth, and if my voice sounds a little weird, that's because the uh, little fuzzy protector on my microphone just fell off, got blown off by the wind. We're gonna, just gonna stick it back on. Shout out to Larry for fixing that. As it is a one and no count here for Chetney. Perry Chetney, the catcher from Baldwinsville, New York. Make that a two and no count. Barone down just a bit, ball three. And Chetney one more ball away from a nice Saturday afternoon stroll to first. Strike one. Tightening back up is Barone. There's ball four. As Barone will stroll on over to first, and this will bring up number nine, Luke O. Oh, gets a piece of that first one. Strike one as he knocks it foul. Failed pickoff attempt there by the Cardinals. Ball rolls away. That's going to get Chetney over to second. And Barone tried to pick him off at first, was unsuccessful. Remains an 0-1 count. Oh, pops that one up, back, back, back. Valdez trying to get under it right in front of our camera. And lands right behind the camera, behind the fence. That'll be strike two, though. It's a good heads-up play there for Alex Valdez. O and two count for O. Another foul ball, no harm done this time. Stop calls for some fresh balls. Very error-filled game so far. Both teams have committed three errors each. Shows you just what the weather has done to this game. As Barone is trying to pick off Chetney over there at first, excuse me, second. Big gust of wind coming through here. The pitch, oh, swings. Did he get a piece of it or did it tip off of the catcher? Regardless, goes rolling in front of the Canesville dugout. I think they're gonna say that was another foul ball, so it remains 0-2. It was a bit of a lazy swing by O. I think he lost commitment to the pitch about halfway through, knowing it was gonna be a strike. Oh, gets another piece of that one. No balls have been thrown yet as he keeps hitting foul balls. He has hit nothing but fouls. Boy, this game this is this this has the makings of one of those bizarre games where just all of the strangest things happen so far. The weather, the player getting hit by a hit by a ball. Now we got a big cloud of dust coming up in the infield. As there, oh my goodness, they didn't catch they they called that a ball. They didn't call that a strike. Right down the middle, that could, that was picture perfect from Barone, but they're gonna call that a ball, one and two. Speaking of the weather, there were some snow flurries this morning. Rained all day yesterday, here's Barone's pitch. Foul, and that might have hit more than just 
Actually, for the sound of it, it sounded like it only hit his handle. This might be the longest at-bat we've seen so far of the season. One and two count. Well, doesn't feel like it. That one smashed into center field. Ramirez got it! Jello making a big play out there in center field like always. And a great stop by the Cardinals to get O out. Bradley Soto up next. He was the player who got hit by a, a batted ball. Caused a bit of confusion up here for our live time for our live scoring. So we've never really seen anything like that before. Barone winding up, taking his time, keeping his eyes on Chetney. And he throws strike one, picture perfect strike. I mentioned earlier the weather, it rained incessantly yesterday, dousing this field, but the Cardinals did a great job after Thursday's game against Dundalk by getting the tarp down and getting the field prepared. So it's a perfect field out there. Just a few spots of mud around the edges of home plate. Other than that, it's near perfect. Swing and a miss, strike two. And Soto's having a tough time out there at the at the plate. Oh, and two count. Wind picking up once again. We wait. And there's another bulk there from Barone. As he's trying to catch Chutney out there at second. Barone's pitch, swing and a miss! Out number two, and Barone is definitely tightening up. This will bring up number three, Roy Glom, the sophomore from Jupiter, Florida. And again, Barone keeps stepping off the mound there. Trying to catch Chetney out there at second. His first pitch. Chopped up. Did it go fair? No, it went foul. As DeLuca is able to grab it. That'll be strike one. Well, if you thought it was cold now, folks, uh, I got some cloud cover coming in. It's about to get freezing. And just as I say that, <laughs> That wind becomes a thousand times more chilling. That's March baseball for you. Pitch is down the middle strike. You know, Barone, of course, being the freshman, has had a great start to this season. Had a couple of starts. He's looked fantastic at almost all of them. Making a case for possibly being the Cardinals' ace as there's a foul ball. Cardinals current ace pitcher Patrick Bauer has been out injured following their trip to Florida. He should be back later this season. He, of course, the nearly seven foot tall giant who just dominates on the mound for the Cardinals. Cecil Barone making a case for himself. As that ball is knocked up, Bailey going back. No, the wind carried it way off target. It was headed right towards the right field line but the wind carried it over to the batting cages. So that's another foul ball. Same situation we had with, with Luke O. No balls have been thrown so far by Barone. They've all been foul balls or strikes. Barone's pitch, inside, swung at. Foul, they're gonna say he hit it. Took me a second there, didn't hear any sound. That's why I got a spotter up here with me. Popped up again, and another foul ball. We'll wait to see where that lands. out. A little bit of a 
delay here. It's kind of annoying when that happens, but it happens. Pitch. And there's ball one, finally. One and two count. There's days like these that I wish we had a closed, uh, we had a closed press box that wasn't open to the elements, but builds character. Another pitch fouled off. As I keep thinking, with the way the wind is blowing towards us, blowing towards home plate, so I have a feeling that a lot of these ball, these uh, foul balls that are being hit should be going fair. They just get caught by the wind. Another foul ball, that one uh, bounces right back to home plate. At this rate, we'll be here all day on this one at bat. This is the 10th pitch of the at bat for Barone. And so far, he's thrown one ball, one strike, and everything else has been foul balls. Roy Glom is dragging this one out. Barone keeping his eyes on second, throws. Strike three, got him! Cecil Barone breaks through, and we are halfway through game one of this doubleheader. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's a pitcher's duel. We'll see what happens now. Leading off for the Cardinals this inning, bottom of the fourth, halfway through game one of our doubleheader will be Big Tony, Tony D'Angeli, out of Columbia, Maryland. Sophomore first baseman, played catcher last year, transitioned to first base, he has been a monster out there ever since. Now he's getting to start this game, but don't be surprised if the Cardinals switch it up for game two. They've got another very talented first baseman who you will be hearing a lot of this year, and that's Nick Sturgio. More on him if he plays game two, which we're hoping he will. First pitch. Strike. We've uh, waxed and waned about how great Barone has been. Well, let's uh, let's give a second for Joey Young, the freshman pitcher out on the mound. For Cayuga, he's had a great day too. One and one count. Down to the dirt, there's ball two. All the Cardinals really need are two runs and they can win this game with the, traje the trajectory this game is going with it being such a fierce pitcher's duel. D'Angeli, nice position in on that ball. Second baseman grabs it, track race. D'Angeli, not able to get there in time. There's out number one. The speed just not there from the big guy. It's okay though, setting the tone. Miles Bowens, designated hitter up next. 
tallest batter the Cardinals have. Again, not the tallest player. That would be the Bauer brothers, the two pitchers, Jackson and Patrick, the two of whom uh, rival the, the, the great Randy Johnson in height. Miles Bowens facing down Young. Outside, ball one. Two and no count. There's strike one, two and one count here for Miles Bowens. Next pitch. Just a tad off target. That'll be ball three. And Bowens is one away from a nice walk to first. He'll get it. That's a walk for Miles Bowens as he gets ball four. He'll trot on down to first base. And this will bring up out of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. It's Alex Valdez, the catcher. Only international player for the Cardinals. Well, actually, excuse me, one of two. Forgot Orlando Perez Jr. is from St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Valdez had a good day so far today. This is his second at bat as he smacks that one. Fly ball into right field. Right fielder going for it and grabbing it, and that'll be the second out as Valdez flies out. Bowens will stay at first. Batting next for the Cardinals will be the very tall and very aggressive Caleb Bailey. Now, Bailey has been helping out as one of our student interns for our athletic department this spring. He and Orlando Perez Jr. have been doing an excellent job in that capacity. Without them, we would be behind on a lot of stuff. So, big shout out to Caleb and Orlando. May see Orlando game two. Caleb, we're seeing now as he waits there and gets strike one. Now, Caleb told me before the season, I was talking to him about what his plans were for the season. If he had any goals, he said, I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to play for the team. And so far he has. He had that walk-off home run against Lakeland last Sunday as he smacks that ball up to the shortstop, takes a bit of a hop, and they're going to get Bowens at second, and that's going to bring an end to the inning. Cardinals just can't seem to figure out this Cayuga defense, but they've got three more innings to figure it out as we head to the top of the fifth. Cecil Brome back on the mound. We got three more innings to go in game one, and then we got another seven innings for game two. Hopefully it'll warm up just a bit. Leading off this inning for Cayuga, and making a bunt attempt will be number one, Caleb Deli, as we're at the bottom of the order. And that will be ball one. Game's gone by pretty quickly. We're only about an hour in. Delhi swings and misses. That's what we like to see. Cold day outside. No, 
cold day, bitter winds. All the players in the field agree. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. We care what happens, but let's get this game over with. As Delhi smacks that one up. Is it fair? Yes, it is fair. The wind carried that one fair. Williams trying to chase it down, and Delhi's going to get to second. And Cayuga immediately with a player in scoring position. Cardinals definitely care about who wins this game, though. They're on a four-game winning streak. They started the season off 1-7 and seven on that road trip to Florida, came back home, dropped... 1-6, excuse me. They dropped their home opener against Sussex County. Then they swept Lakeland. They swept Dundalk. They play Cayuga and then West uh, Cayuga and then uh, SUNY Orange this weekend. As there is ball one for the leadoff hitter, Messina. Cardinals are in the midst of a 14-game homestand. They play at home for 14 straight games. All of their home games are in the first half of the season. Second half of the season is where we will have more away games. But don't worry. While the Cardinals baseball team is on the road, Cardinals softball will be at home. Messina pops that one up. D'Angeli trying to get under it. Calls it. Got it. Gets the first out and, more importantly, keeps Delhi at second. Now here's a player who's had a fantastic day today, Fernando Espinal. Been on base both. He's already had two hits, been on base both times he's been at bat. Trying to make that three for three as he faces down Barone. Barone having a great day too. Swing, fouls it off, may have hit the... <laughs> Excuse me, may have hit the catcher. So that'll be strike one. Oh, and one count. Barone keeping his eyes on second. Fires. Chopper gets past Barone. Chico dashes. D'Angeli got him. They will deny Espinal, and that's out number two. Well, that's Tyler Korski up next for Cayuga. Korski, another very tall batter. A lot of tall batters here for Cayuga as his, his Barone's first pitch is just a bit inside for ball one. Wind picking up. Feels like every time the wind picks up, something weird happens. I wonder what it will be this time. Fly ball, back into right field. Did he catch it? Did he get it? He did! What a catch by Caleb Bailey! He tripped, he fell backwards, and he still caught the ball. My goodness, what a play. And that will end the inning. We head to the bottom of the fifth. The Cardinals continue to make a stand defensively. So we've got two and a half more innings to go.
Well, if you're not a fan of low-scoring pitcher's duels, uh, unfortunately, that's what we're dealing with today. And a cold Saturday afternoon, Noah DeLuca leading off for the Cardinals, and he swings and misses for strike one. And folks, it has gotten so cold up here in the press box that we have kicked, that we have brought out the space heater. <laughs> we have brought out the space heater. Don't know if it'll work too much outside, but it is nice to put your hands down and just feel the heat. Oh, that feels nice. <laughs> We got blankets up here. We got a space heater. We got a nice game of baseball going on. Is DeLuca nice and bunt perfectly placed? He's going to run to first, but uh, he knew it. He slowed down. He knew he wasn't going to get there in time. Good try by DeLuca. Bottom of the order we go, and it's Chico time. And it's Christian Figueroa is up next. Forgot to mention, joining us today, working the scoreboard, is Catonsville's own, let me make sure I get the name right, sorry, Virgil Watson. We always usually have a player for the Cardinals who's not active in the game running the scoreboard for us. It's always a treat to have them here as Chico swings and misses. You may occasionally over here get a hot mic moat where you overhear some of us uh, going hog wild when something good happens. As Chico faints a bunt and gets caught for strike two. Right now, the Cardinals just can't seem to figure out Joey Young, excellent freshman pitcher for Cayuga, as he has struggled as now the ref's calling time. I'll wait to see what that was about. He motioned to something. Young's pitch outside, ball one. Ooh, the heat from that space heater feels good as Chico fouls that one away. I think we should have turns with this uh, with a space heater pointed it, <laughs> pointing at each other. Another foul ball by Chico. It's the 21st century. We have 21st century solutions for 21st century problems. One and two count for Chico. And that one was high. That'll be ball two. Evens the count up two and two. Chico pops that one up and you can see the wind carry it as it Goes down into the shallow center field and is caught out for out number two. Wind really got a piece of that one. Back to the top of the order we go. Jello time. Angelo Ramirez is up next. See what Jello can do. Get a spark here for the Cardinals. Wind has died down. Oh, he got a piece of it. Little chopper right up. Jello screaming to first. And they got him. I don't believe it. We're going to go to the sixth now. The Cardinals still held scoreless. We've got two more innings to go to see if the Cardinals can get a comeback going and keep their winning streak alive. Remember, we have one more game to play. So this game is just the warm up. We'll see what happens. We'll be right back. Leading off this inning for Cayuga as they try to preserve their 1-0 lead is Michael Norton. 
he faces Cecil Barone. Already 80 pitches thrown. Barone, as he throws ball one, might be reaching the end of Barone's time on the mound. These last, as we have two more innings to play in here in game one. You know, there's an old saying about double headers that we have here at Catonsville. As Barone's pitch is shallow and low for ball two. There's an old saying when it comes to double headers. If one double header is uh, low scoring and comes down low scoring and comes down to the wire, the other is going to be a one-sided shellocking. As that ball is hit straight up into center field over the head of Aristi, Ramirez is there, and Norton starts the inning off with a single. Catonsville has been out hit five to two in this game. And this will bring up Perry Chetney. And we'll have to wait because here comes a mound visit. Here comes head coach Dan Blue. This might be the change we've been waiting. We'll wait to see who is warming up in the dugout and the bullpen, excuse me. Cecil's thrown a great game, only allowing one run. 46. And entering the game for the Cardinals, the reliever, number 46, Andrew Bubon, the freshman from Longwood, Florida. He will come in to replace Cecil Barone. And give a hand to Barone, folks. He pitched an excellent game, an excellent game. Only allowed a single run, five hits. It was a pitcher's duel. They had to make a change eventually. And well, Dan Blue is thinking this might be our best chance here. Get a different pitcher out there. Keep stalling Cayuga and give our batters enough time. Cayuga probably will have to pull Young at some point, too. Now here is Bubon. We have not seen him at home so far this season. Another pitcher who was... We talked about in our season preview article that was posted about a month ago on our CCBC Catonsville Cardinals Athletics website. Andrew Bubon is one of several freshman pitchers who... Uh, are highly sought after prospects for Coach Blue. And he will get a chance here to relieve. To relieve Cecil Barone. We'll get we'll let him get in his warm-up pitches and we'll be right back. Bubon's got his warm-up pitches in, and we're back underway. Umpire dusting off home plate. Number 19, Perry Chetney, who's had a solid day on the mound, is up to bat for the Spartans. I keep wanting to call them the Trojans. I keep forgetting, no, Spartans. It's the other one. And Bubon's first pitch just a tad bit low, ball one. See if a shake of a pitching could change anything for the Cardinals. Pitching hasn't been a problem for them today. Problem has been the opposing pitching. It's been a great pitcher's duel. As there is strike one, Bubon starting to heat up. Just like we are getting nice and heated up and toasty thanks to this beautiful space heater courtesy of our equipment room. Shout out to Larry who brought it down for us. Ball two. Bubon now tried to pick off Norton over there at first. Two one count. That one, that was a bit outside, but they called it inside the strike zone, strike two. As the Cardinals announcer, I'm not complaining, but I will mention that was a bit outside, but hey, umpire made his judgment there. Full count for Chetney. Haven't seen a lot of full counts today. What we have seen is a lot of stalls in which uh, the opposing batters just keep hitting foul balls. But it seems to only be affecting Cayuga. Catonsville hasn't really had that happen. Cloud cover coming in. Low pitch, ball four, and that will put two on and bring up Luke O. And I was just saying about the players who have hit a lot of, um, of foul balls. Well, Luke O had that 10-pitch marathon against Barone 
back in the, uh, was it the top of the fourth or the top of the fifth? I think it was the top of the fifth. Yeah, where it was 10 pitches, one ball, one strike, the rest foul balls. And O is picking up where he left off, hitting foul one for a strike. Oh, and one count here for O. He gets a nice piece of that. This could be playable. DeLuca and Aristi both charging in, but they will not be able to get it as it's another foul ball. Boy, Luke O, he hits nothing but fouls. A sophomore out of Edmiston, New York. Graduate of Edmiston High School. Another one of those tiny villages up there in upstate New York. Beautiful place, by the way. And a lot of very good teams come from there. Cardinals are playing a few of them this weekend. They've got SUNY Orange tomorrow. That's another doubleheader, which you will be able to watch on the Cardinals network as, oh, it's another foul. Remember, all home games will be on the Cardinals network, barring technical issues. It's, oh, hits that one. It's playable. Look at the wind carry it. Oh, and DeLuca makes a fantastic catch and gets the out. I didn't even notice him down there. I was so focused on the wind carrying the ball, but that's a great play there by Noah DeLuca. And Noah DeLuca having an excellent day out there defensively. Soto is up next, Bradley Soto. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Move on two outs away from closing out this top of the sixth inning. Low pitch, ball one. We've got a pretty decent cloud cover coming in. That's helpful for some of us who are using computer screens up here in the booth because now we can actually see them as there's a lazy swing and a miss for Soto. Bubon getting him to swing at junk. That's a sign of a good pitcher out there on the mound. Foul ball. Soto was another player who had a Had a battle of fouls in the top of the fifth inning. One and two count. Soto again swinging at an outside pitch. He's lucky he made contact. Gets another foul ball. Bubon very good at baiting these batters to take swings. Soto's just got a very long arm span. Able, he was able to just hit that ball with the tip of his bat. And again, he swings at it, knocks it foul. And that's going to land. Heads up somewhere behind us. It's the same case that we had at the top of the last inning. Everyone is hitting foul balls. What pitch count are we on now? This will be the seventh pitch thrown to Soto. One ball, two strikes, the rest, just like that, foul balls. On to pitch number eight. The boom on trying to get out of this jam that the Cardinals are in. Finally draws one to DeLuca who misses it, but they're gonna rule it went foul. Another foul ball. And we're on pitch number nine. Two count. Ninth pitch at the bat. Hit. Umpire gets out of the way. Quick toss. Double play. No, they won't get it. They got one out. And that will bring one home. As Norton scores, makes it 2 nothing. D'Angeli missed that throw. And instead of a double play, the Cardinals allow one to score and one to get on. They did manage to get, who was that? Oh, they did manage to get, they 
did manage to get Chetney out at second, though. This will bring up Roy Glom, who as Buvon tries to get a pick off. Cardinals now trailing 2 nothing here to Cayuga. As Buvon tightens up, gets strike one. Pitch number two, line drive. Dropped by DeLuca for a second. He throws, did he get him? Yes, got it in time to D'Angeli. As that deluca D'Angeli connection works perfectly. The Cardinals give up a run, but they still keep it within striking range as we head to the bottom of the sixth. The score, two nothing in favor of the Spartans. It's crunch time, Catonsville has to respond, and we will be right back. We have a pitching change here at CCBC Catonsville's baseball complex. This pitching duel is going to go down to the relievers as Brantley Griggs, the freshman from Savannah, Georgia, graduate of South Effingham High School, is into the game now for Cayuga. On this bitterly cold March day. You know, they're saying March is the new winter. I'm starting to believe them. Cardinals trail 2-0. They need an influx of runs here, and I think they can get it. There's a new pitcher, they could test him. Pardon me, folks, I'm gonna have to admonish one of my players. Do not hog the Space Eater, Virgil. <laughs> we need three Space Eaters at this point. We're so cold up here, but we're having a fun time. This is a classic pitcher's duel going on right now, and Jalen Williams is gonna try to be the hero for the Cardinals and break through this duel. I'm just kidding, by the way, Virgil. You could use the Space Eater as much as you want. I, it, it is wonderful to have this up here. I could just reach down and feel the heat. Players on the field, though, you definitely have to feel for them having to pitch in this weather. And there is strike one. Griggs, by the way, is pitching with half sleeves. I don't know how he's doing it. Williams swings, misses strike two. Two quick strikes here for Brantley Griggs, the new pitcher for Cayuga. He's got a big smile on his face so far. You can tell he's having fun out there. Third pitch, outside, ball one, one and two count. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Cayuga trying to close this one out. They'll still have to play the bottom of the seventh. As there's ball two, even count. Williams being more patient here than he was at the start. Cardinals have only recorded two hits in this game so far. As Williams looked, waited, and we got a full count. Pitch. Hit up, popped up, pop foul, goes foul. As that landed on the opposing sidelines. Remains a full count. Williams, chopper, did that go fair? It did, it's a track race, not able to get there in time. That's the first out of the inning. 
And if that's the last we've seen, it's been a tough day for Jalen Williams, but you could say that about anybody for Catonsville. They have just struggled immensely to get that ball to go fair. Moises Aristi Jr. coming up now to try and break through the ice for the Cardinals. Strike one. Aristi has been in a bit of a slump recently. Struggled the last few games, but all it takes is one play. Swing and a miss, strike two. Aristi hits it right to the third baseman. Track race, not gonna get there in time. Two quick outs. Well, I don't know if anyone will believe this listening at home, but there was a fly just now crawling around near my laptop that I used to run um, the broadcast. He disappeared, but uh, hey, little fly, how on earth are you uh, alive out here in this weather? Ball one for Big Tone, Tony D'Angeli. One of my favorite players to announce at the plate. You never know what he's going to do as he gets a piece of that one and gets strike one as it goes foul. And it's crunch time. As it, we got to the point in crunch time where I think we can go ahead and say the prayer. Oh, baseball gods, please give the Cardinals a sign. That wasn't the sign we were looking for. Is that's a nasty strike down the middle. Bit of a change up there by, Br by Griggs. D'Angeli gets a piece of that, knocks it foul, but it could be in play, and it will be. First baseman makes a great play, and we're in the final inning, folks. It's all come down to this now. Top of the seventh, Cardinals desperately need something to happen to preserve their winning streak. We'll wait and see what happens, as we'll be right back. Crunch time for Catonsville. Bottom of, excuse me, top of the seventh, final inning of game one. Thick cloud cover overhead. It is cold. Andrew Bubon's at the plate in his first, his first pitch ball as he faces off against number one, Caleb Deli, who is the, will lead off this inning four. The Spartans. There's ball two. Once again, folks, game two coming up right after this. You will see the live stream go live here on the on the CCB Kingsville Cardinals network. Chopper right back to the pitcher. He's going to flip it to D'Angeli. That's one away. What the Cardinals need here, they need a quick one, two, three, and they need their best batters to go out there and just do what they do best. All the Cardinals need is three runs to win it. They were in a similar situation last Sunday against Lakeland. What happened? Walk-off home run by Caleb Bailey. Anything is possible in this pitching duel. Strike one. We're back to the top of the order. It is Phil Messina.
Messina slaps that one. First baseman grab it. Got it! Two away. Great start for the Cardinals here in this inning as Bubon draws two shallow hits, is able to collect both of them. And Tony D'Angelo, well, Tony D'Angelo grabbed the second one. D'Angelo and Bubon have combined to get the first two outs as here comes Fernando Espinal, who has had the best day out of anybody for the Spartans. See what he could do here. First pitch, he hits it. Aristi, it bounced off his glove. That's gonna be a hit. Yes, it will. Espinal is definitely going to be one of those characters you're going to have to watch out for in game number two if he plays. Remember, a lot of these teams with these double headers, they will shift players around, not just pitchers, to give everyone some rest. We should see a slightly different lineup for the Cardinals, including some very popular players we haven't seen so far. As Bubon trying to pick off Espinal at first. Up next for the Spartans is Tyler Korski. Another pickoff attempt won't go. Fly ball, right field, past the foul line, it will go foul. That'll be strike one. As Caleb Bailey was trying to chase it down. Strike two. Bubon heating up here in the seventh. Runner trying to make the second. Chico snags that ball out of midair. Ends this inning and we head to the bottom of the seventh. And now the question is, can the Cardinals get it done? We'll find out when we come back to the final three outs of game one of our doubleheader. Leading off this inning for Catonsville, Miles Bowens, the designated hitter. All Catonsville needs is three runs and they can win it. They have struggled all day long to get anything going. First pitch, Bowens chops it foul for strike one. The sun trying to peek past this vast cloud of uh, this vast wall of clouds that have shown up. It's freezing cold. 0 and 1 count. Griggs's pitch is outside. Bowens shows some restraint. It's always a great game when it comes down to the final inning. 2 0 is the score. Griggs' his pitch, Bowens chops it foul again, lands right in front of our stand, our scorer's stand, excuse me. Here comes the sun. Doo -doo -doo -doo. One and two count. Bowens swings and misses. 
And that's the first out. Tough day for Miles Bowens. Hopefully he'll get a chance to play game two. Alex Valdez up next for the Cardinals. Valdez takes a swing. They're going to say he didn't go. Ball one. Good call by the ump there. Pitch number two. Valdez hits it foul. That was bizarre. The ball kind of just floated. It looked like it was floating for a second. Umpire taking a look at that ball. One and one count for Valdez. One and one pitch. Valdez chops it up towards the shortstop. Track race try to get there in time. He will not. Cardinals are down to their final out. Caleb Bailey up next. He hit that big home run for the Cardinals against Lake Lynch that won them the game. He doesn't have anybody on base to help, so this will be his last chance. It's gonna come down to this. Even if the Cardinals lose, don't worry, we've got game one around the corner, but man, you know they wanna win to preserve their winning streak. They've won their last four. First pitch hits the dirt ball one. Bailey gets a piece of the second, hits it foul. Even count, one and one. Griggs winding up. Bailey smacks it to the shortstop. It'll be close. They got him. They got him, and that's going to do it. Game one of the doubleheader ends. Gainesville's win streak breaks. 2-0 is the score as Cayuga takes the victory. And now Catonsville will look for revenge in game two. That's coming up in just a bit, everybody. As we want to thank you for tuning in to this first game on this cold day. We've got one more game to go. That'll come up in about 30 minutes. In the meantime, go grab a snack. Go grab some lunch. Get up, use the bathroom, do whatever you got to do. I know I'll be doing that. We'll restart this live stream for game number two in just a bit, folks. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Let's get set for game two as the Cardinals look to get revenge on the Spartans.